acorn leaf blight is a fungal disease of corn that we see especially in cooler climates or when we've had a cooler spring and is especially going to be common when we've had temperatures between about 65 and 85 degrees. Now you can see this disease in a lot of different hybrids but it's especially going to be more common in more susceptible genetics because we do have resistance and tolerance to this particular disease. When you're in the field and trying to diagnose this disease, you want to look for larger lesions that can be anywhere from three to about seven or eight inches long. These lesions are going to be cigar shaped in general and have uh, rounded ends on them and be tan or gray in color. Usually they're going to be parallel to the leaf itself and the margins and it might look similar to some other diseases that you've seen, maybe some bacterial diseases like uh, Goss's bacterial wilt and blight or Stewart's wilt. But it's important to notice the rounded ends on the lesions and that the middle of the lesions might look dusty or a little bit dirty. And that's because of the large quantities of fungal spores produced by this fungus in the middle of those lesions. As far as management goes, we do have several options. This fungus is a residue-borne fungus. And what that means is if you have the disease this year, you're likely to see it again in the future in susceptible hybrids. Crop rotation, since it's residue borne, can be an effective way of minimizing disease severity in future years, as well as tillage if that's an option for you. Finally, we do have fungicides that are very effective against, against northern corn leaf blight. And when selecting hybrids, look for a high level of resistance or tolerance to that disease. But in addition, you should know that the fungus is variable, and so we do have multiple races of this one. And so if resistant hybrids are not being effective, it might be a good time to select a different type of resistance for this fungus. If you need help for making a diagnosis, be sure and contact your local university plant and pest diagnostic clinic or county extension office.